Hey everybody, welcome to Woodworking Wisdom. My name's Colin Way, and today we have a recorded session, so we're not live, um, but you know the form. Still ask the questions, and we will get back to you, or go directly via email to Woodworking Wisdom. Um, today's project is another suggestion of yours. It's going to be natural edge bud vases. So this is this is a great project for using up those really horrible, gnarly bits of old timber that you think there is no possible use for. Um, um, and you can do nothing with all right so it just transforms some of that uh, that old firewood into, into something relatively i think really quite nice actually so let's have a quick look at them we got ben on the camera so he's controlling everything we're going to go overhead i think to start with just to have a look at a few of these so i've just done three in prep so this is i don't even know what the timber of this one is but it's a gnarly piece of burr something and look what we've done we've just created that nice sweeping top to the the bud vase now these are going to be dried flower vases um i haven't put a liner in them so just for dried flowers but we've got the real nice um burrs coming out there we a few weeks ago we looked at something um called the katsugi bowl so where we were creating um uh, veins where the cracks were we were filling them with epoxy black epoxy um and making a solid piece here we're doing a similar sort of thing we're looking at those um sort of what we would usually refer to sorry refer to as flaws so the perfect imperfections that's that's the phrase that we like to use so perfect imperfection using them in our favor so that's a piece of burr something we've got a lovely piece of boxwood here okay so this is a piece of box and what i've done with this is brushed the outside with a wire brush which we'll look at in a moment um but that this holds a, f a floor in the way of a crack i even i would refer to that as a floor but if we treat this properly you could use the same sort of process that we use in the kasugi bowl and fill it with resin if you want to or you make a feature of it we're not trying to hide anything here we're making features of all these little subtle imperfections so sanding the crack out making it uh, it's purposeful it's supposed to be there um, and then that you can choose to show that if you're putting it on the mantle or you can choose to show the the um the side without the crack but still beautiful vase you've got some lovely little markings going around here the same way you would have in say for instance a natural edge um, bowl you get these lovely natural edges these crinkly edges um, and you're showing the stunning um, colors in that timber so that's a piece of boxwood um, and then I've got another one here. A lot of people love this timber. This is a piece of yew. So even keeping on the little knolls, there's little knobbly bits here where a branch was sticking out. There's a crack up here just where um, the, the heart crack came through and it's just busted away and turning. It doesn't matter. It's part of that piece. It's that uh, perfect imperfections that we're looking for. So many sides, so many features to look at. You can, One day you can put it facing out that way. Next day you can have it facing that way. You've got lots of different views of it, lots of different aspects. So there, there's three examples. I've got a piece here of um, laburnum. I know laburnum. It's got a crack in it to start with. Um, the crack isn't big enough to make a thing of, really. So I'm going to use that as the base. The bark is going to stay on hopefully um, if it doesn't doesn't matter we'll just make a, um, a thing of the bark um, not being there we'll make it look nice whatever there's some still some moss on it there's some lichen on it so there's lots of things i am going to brush this afterwards so probably get rid of a lot of that but if you wanted to keep it on just don't brush it seal the outside with some cedar afterwards and, and away we go i know this piece is going to be quite pretty um for a start we've got that lovely um contrasting in sap and heartwood but also we've got lots of things happening here we've got some um, dead branches um, in several places and they streak into center as you can just sort of see in this one here so there's lots of good things happening so this is really about the process how do we get from a to b and so we're going to start with between centers we need to get a rough um, a rough shape only um, we're going to create a hole point for the chuck and this is going to be driven off of the c jaws and i'm going to offset this actually because i want to get that base as flat as i physically can another good thing about these doesn't have to be centered does it as long as we're we're nearly then look how wild that is don't worry i will tidy that up in a minute so there we are so as it's offset i need to check to make sure nothing's going to touch my tool rest and lock in nicely lay speed down to zero turn the lathe on okay so i will need to true this end up here 
going to create a hole point for my C jaws. Then I'm going to rough down that uh, that section there. In fact, we might do that first so I can get the lathe speed up a little bit. Because, of course, that being offset, it's going to make the lathe wobble quite a lot when I turn the lathe speed up. So let's let's just take some of that away. I'm going to have dust extraction on right from the beginning because this is a dry piece of laburnum and it's quite dusty. So I want all that nastiness gone as I'm turning just to protect myself and Ben, really. There we are. So there, I'm up to a thousand revs. It won't let me go any faster. I can already feel the machine wanting to wobble a little bit. So let's take away some of that uneven timber. We'll have a look in a minute. But just briefly to stop that and show you, we're running through into that lovely, look at that nice white sap and the, 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 the dark green on the inside. So I know this is going to be really pretty once it's done, but we do need to get the lathe up in terms of speed. So let me carry on taking a bit more of this waste wood away. There we are. So that's roughed out. Now the reason I don't want to finish that shape is we're going to re-chuck this in a minute. And if I start moving things around, there is a potential, because the timber's soft, when I grip it with a chuck it could throw it off a little bit. So I'm not going to finish the shape at this point. I'm going to go straight on to get the whole point done now. Um, and to do that I want to give um, the sea jaws plenty of depth. I want to clean the base up. When we finish this there will be a little bit of sacrificial timber left in the um, in the sea jaws. I'll just turn that extractor off just for a little bit whilst we do this small bit of turning. So look, I'm using a parting tool. This one's quite a wide parting tool. So I'm just going to take away some of that some of that bottom area. And I want to allow myself enough room when finished to part and cut the piece off. So that's ample there. What we've got, that's perfect. At this stage, I'm not worried about the the finish. So just tidying up and making the whole point fit for the sea jaws. There, that's done. Now, if you're going to make several of these, and you know I'm always talking production turning, or at least batch turning, not production necessarily, but you'd probably be doing two or three of these if you attempt them at all. So it's worth getting everything to that stage before you then start moving the, the lathe around and putting chucks and things on. So we're just going to move that out of the way. We'll take the sensor out. We'll put our sea jaws on. Sorry, I'll put our SK-114 chuck on with the sea jaws in them. So there we are, I've got the C, the chuck already mounted up with the C's, we can then bring that in, lock my chuck, I'm going to just tighten the chuck up a little bit more, once I've established that I've found centre, okay, then I can go back to the chuck and give them a proper tighten. So look, what I've got here is plenty of room here. I can part that off um, later on. And I'm going to sand the bottoms because there's not going to be a way that I can get to the bottom any way um, or any safe way. So I'm going to sand the bottom. Um, I know it's going to uh, work because I've tried it already. Um, so I'm just going to cut nice and straight. We will use the pull saw as well um, to just finish off the last little bit. But this has freed us up. We're now ready. We know we've got a nice firm hold. I'm going to get the chuck the tool rest in there make sure nothing's going to touch and then back to that same tool I can turn the lay speed up a little bit now and 
rather than just come up into a a full stop, we're going to have a little bead right on the very top. It gives the vase a little bit of strength. Gives a little bit of shadow. Almost there. I think just one more. There we are. Now a little B. So let's take a little bit of that diameter away. I'm just going to roll a bead over here. Same with the back. And then in a minute, we're just going to drill. So I'm using a 10 mil, oh, 10 mil lip and spur a bit just to put the hole down the center. There we are. There we are. Let's just have a stop and have a look. See where we are. If we're happy with the shape, we've got some lovely markings coming through on this bit of laburnum. Really pretty bit of timber. Um, I think that's it. I think we don't need to go any further. So let's think about drilling out now. So we know that that's going to be lined up. So I'm going to replace my tailstock center with my drill chuck, which I've already got mounted up with the, the lip and spur. It's okay. So they're just a keyless chuck. The lip and spur. What I mean by lip and spur um, is that's that is a brad point basically. So you've got two little wings and a centre um, tooth that grabs centre really nicely and keeps it located for us. Um, and being dried flower vases, you don't need to go as deep as you may do if you're um, lining the vase and um, and intend to put put water in it. So nice and gentle, just to begin with going to start screeching a little bit, it always does, so a little bit of wax could help, and frequently clearing the swarf would also help. There we are, that's going to be deep enough. So I'm going to take the drill chuck out, we'll lose the tail stock them on the floor anyway. Put them out of the way where you're not going to trip over it. Then we can bring the tool rest around. We've got to remove that bit of waste up here now you see. So if I drop that down, lay speed back to the same. We're going to downsize our bowl gouge. We're going to go to a little quarter inch gouge now. Look, Just be gentle. We're only holding a small area with the sea jaws. We're also a long way from that chuck. But what I want to do is just bring that bead all the way round into that hole. And then in a lot of ways, there's this is the same exact same way that I would um, turn. A regular vase, except on a regular vase, of course, we take all that bark off, it'll be down to perfect um, perfect round, and you shape it. Apart from that, there's no difference in how we would work here. So there, it's all ready for sanding now, so all I'm going to do is just put the dust extractor on. We're going to work down from 100 to 150 to 240, 400. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about um, going any finer than that. This is an gnarly vase. What we did mention, though, is that we're going to brush the outside edge. You do get a very different look to the piece once you've brushed it. And certainly, if there are any bits you want to get rid of in terms of, of lichen and moss and things like that, then it's essential. Two brushes here um, that I'm using at the moment. There's lots of brushes you can use, of course. You can go to brass as well, which is slightly in between these two. But this is a steel brush. 
This is um, a nylon brush. Uh, this one I prefer for this sort of job. This one's extremely coarse um, and will take pretty much everything off. But this will clean it and texture. So it's really good for texturing. Gets rid of all the, any old dirt, mud, that sort of stuff. But look, you can see it really, really working. And when we finish this, we are going to put some sanding sealer over that as well. I tend to do this before I start sanding because we're, you know, it's going to create some scratches. So there we are. That's nice and clean. I particularly like the way it um, it's acted with this um, this boxwood. You can see that that sort of real leather-like finish it's given it, and that's held in then with sanding sealer. I've I've coated the outside surface uh, with sanding sealer. Right, dust extraction because we're going to sand. So remember, 150. Sorry, 100, 150, 40, And you're sanding everything, remember, so it's as important to sand it inside the vase or inside the hole. It certainly is the way you can see as it is outside. Unlike a natural edge bowl, you can sand this with the machine running and it doesn't matter if you soften the leading edges. That's one thing when we're making a natural edge bowl, we're always careful of that we don't soften these edges in any way. In, th in this sort of project, it's almost better to soften them. It just gives that extra little um, sort of visual, um, visual thing really, which makes it look really nice. So there we are, that was a 100, so now 150. go to uh, 240 see what that looks like you can't really lose when you've got timber that looks like this really really pretty stuff really really nice you've got that real contrast with the sap and the heartwood that lovely whiteness now watch what happens now we're going to put a sanding sealer on we're going to pick out the sanding sealer as well with a little bit of wax afterwards but watch this the colors just jump with our sanding sealer and it just emphasizes even more that lovely contrast in the colors all right even that little that little bark edge like i said we'll do the bark as well to seal in any any bits that may be thinking about coming off and this is a cellulose, cellulose based sanding sealer it's a 50 50 mix and so what that's doing for me it's sinking in a long way it's acting like glue as well so it'll go in a nice long way. It'll dry very quickly because of the amount of thinners that are in there. So before it does, I'm going to start just wiping off all the excess. Because what you find is if there's any thick concentration, concentrated areas of sealer, they'll stay sticky. So we're going to get rid of all that excess that's just pooling on the surface. There we go. 
Oh, that real leather look about it is lovely. Now, ideally, you want to really leave that. Let those thinners dry out, evaporate. But I'm not going to make you sit there and watch paint dry. So we're going to just very slowly have the lathe running. I'm going to sand the solid area. Because what's happening now, the sealer, of course, is doing its job. It's sinking into the grain. It's raising the nap. We then take them off with abrasive. Can you give that a nice smooth finish? The wax I'm using is the micro crystalline, the restoration wax, the Axminster restoration wax. Let me show you the din. There we are, micro crystalline restoration wax. And what we'll do now is we'll just, with abrasive pad, just going to apply that all over. Remember, your sanding sealer is a preparation for a finish. It's not a finish. So it does need to be covered. We're going to use this lovely wax. And with the wax, we'll just buff it off. So, again, ideally, you want to leave it five, ten minutes and buff it off. But we're not going to. We're going to go straight into it. You could wax this surface if you want to. Again, it'll just bring it out and be a lovely sort of satiny finish as opposed to the mat that we've got. We're going to go with some fresh, dry um, tissue. Remember that, that uh, sealer is still drying, so... A little bit faster, but I don't want to go top speed yet. Otherwise, again, I'm going to get a face full of sealer as it comes out of the fibres of that timber. There we are, look. That's really coming to life now. And I like the contrast between the lovely, shiny, perfect timber and the gnarly outside bark that's not so shiny. I think it's quite cool. The, the real contrast is nice. Wipe off any um, bits of rag and any bits of wax that you never got to. But look, that timber's the real star. From a relatively grotty bit of wood, we can create some nice nice pieces. I've seen people do this with gate posts, old oak gate, gate posts that are cracking open. and It really does bring things back to life again. So now we're just going to get the parting tool. I'm going to go with a standard eighth parting tool and just begin the parting process but I'm not going to part all the way through let me just get that dust extractor going and get a lot of dust there I'm not worried about creating an undercut I'm just going to do a straight cut and stop at about an inch of material left so 25 mil There we are. So, a little bit left in there. I'll keep the dust extraction on for the moment because what I want to do is we'll part this off with, or finish the cutting off process with a pull saw, and then we're going to sand that finish. Now, I want to be careful not to touch the outer rim of the base, so I'm going in at a very slight angle. show you the back of that so we've got that little disc to, to, um, to take away and by using a sanding disc now we'll have a nice flat base it'll sit nicely on the table at the moment of course it'll wobble around we know that so take out our little plug and look that's all we've wasted it's not a massive amount that and the bit that we've cut so let's go for our sanding disc with a faceplate ring fits really really well on the C jaws Get my extractor in position. 
Lay speed to zero, turn the lathe on. And up to about a thousand revs seems to work well for this. This is 120 grit abrasive. There we are. I'm just going to take a little bit of abrasive to the very outer edge, just around here, because it's a little bit fractured. I don't want that. I want it nice and rounded almost. So just clean those fibers away. There we are. So you can see the finish there. We can add a little bit of wax to that if we want to, or a little bit of um, a little bit of sanding sealer maybe. Let me turn my extractor off. We'll grab some of the other vial shapes back. So we've got that. I love it. My favourite, I have to say, is, uh, is I'm torn really between the, the boxwood one there and the laburnum one that, we, we, that we've just done. But there. Let's have a look at that properly. So nice little, little bud vase, dried flower vase from laburnum. Good mixture of timbers there. Like I say, we've got the Laverne in the box with the U and the, I think it's an older, piece of older with a, a few burrs and a few bits of worm in it. So there we are. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed that one. Um, a bit of fun. It's a way to recover those horrible bits of timber um, and, and use up all the scraps in the workshop. So thank you ever so much for stepping, stopping by and watching this. Um, any questions, like I say, go to Woodworking Wisdom, uh, our email address, and uh, and ask the question. Or if not, just keep them in the chat. I know you're, you're using the chat really well now, so we monitor that, and I'll be able to answer it in the next video. So thank you ever so much, everybody. If you like what you see, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and share around with as many people as you can. Until next time, thank you very much. Bye-bye.